Hi, it's Gina and welcome back to my channel. Now lately I have really indulged my crafty side by doing a lot of paper crafting for my ephemera series, such as making these cuties, and this was my last video. They're paper clips that I've altered and they're cute and very, very easy to make. So if you've not seen that video, I will attach it to this one, so feel free to check it out. But lately I've been feeling a tug from my artsy side. And with that in mind, I thought I would break out the watercolors and I hope you join me to make some Christmas tags. These are quick and easy and I try to come up with designs and um, st using strokes that are simple for everybody to do. So I do hope you will join me and I will walk you through how I make these. All right, are you ready? Let's get going. So here are our tools that we're going to be using today. These are watercolor brushes from Creelando, I believe. I bought them as a set. And today I think I will probably be using just the four and the eight round. I've pulled a sheet of watercolor paper out and it's Canson watercolor. It's really heavy. It's 140 pound and 300 gram. And I cut it into three by five rectangles and scored it at two and a half inches. And then I you know, use my bone folder and burnish the, the crease and I did it back and forth so that it would close a lot easier. We'll also be using watercolor paints and these are White Knights and please don't ask me to say that name <laughs> because yeah, I totally can't. But let me give you this information. I got these online. I saw a long while ago, I saw someone use these watercolors in um, a tutorial and the colors were just gorgeous, very pigmented. And I just, I went right online and hunted them down and, and ordered them. So I highly recommend them. I love these. Weren't super cheap, but weren't really crazy either. Um, these are the best ones that I currently have at the, at the moment. So these are the tools and let's get started. Our first design is going to be a snowman. As you can see, I've got my two glasses of water and a paper towel, and I'm starting off with the number four round. You just might want to take a pencil and lightly outline your, your general shapes, but otherwise it's just going to be really simple, really loose, and we're not going to stress too much. <laughs> At least we're going to try not to. I'm going to start with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And just keep it light to, to do the outline. Now here's where you need to decide, you know, as far as spacing goes. So do you want to add like a little border and give yourself a smaller area to work within? If so, you want to do that first. For this one, at least right now, I don't think I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to get started. And I'll have my snowman take up pretty much most of the little canvas here. So I'm just going to sketch out an outline of the head. Okay, and then I'm going to do the middle. Okay, and then I'll do the bottom. Oops. There we go. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see that. I might bring you in a little closer. Okay. I'll do my best to stay within frame because you are pretty close. I'm just going to add a little bit of brown and I believe I am using umber. And it's pretty watered down and it's really light. It's just, um, I'm using just a couple of different colors just to give it, just, I don't know, a little bit of interest, I guess. Make it look a little different. Gonna put some shadow, shadow in there. Okay. And that actually looks pretty cute, but you could also go in with a cooler color. Let's try cerulean blue. Let's try that one. Where can I put it? I'll water it down. Now, I think that's absolutely adorable, so I'm very tempted to leave it like that, but you can also add a little bit of the blue. Or maybe even go back with the Payne's Gray because, you know, the blue gives it that icy, gives it that cold look. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for my outline. Now I'm going to move in and give it some features. And for that, I'll go to my black. Now you could do this part in a uh, pen if you want to. Maybe you find that easier to work with. That's perfectly fine. Whatever you feel most comfortable using. 
but I'm just going to put a little black on the tip and I'm going to dot for the eye and dot for the other one. And they don't have to be perfectly round, right? Because they're kind of supposed to be cold. And then I will do a smile. And the way I do the smile, I usually put five dots. So my first one will be in the middle. And then I'll do two on each side, curving up. There. Maybe want to put a few little buttons. Yeah, there you go. Why not? <laughs> Um, let's see, did I leave room? I might put, give him a little bit of a hat. I didn't leave a whole lot of room for a hat, but we'll try. What I like about these paints is, look, that comes off. Because as you can see, a lot of people complain because it's not really flat and everything, you know, you add water, it all runs down. But you can easily lift it up and make it flat, and that is so handy. I just love this paint set. But here you go. Okay. Um, oh no, I messed up his smile. <laughs> Yikes. All right, well, this one's going to be a little goofy. I'm, oh, I must have touched it. That's eh, okay. We'll keep going. So he's a little goofy looking. I'm just going to draw a straight line. As straight as I can get it. And just give him a little top hat. Get some more water. Let's make that a little bit darker. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh well. The kids the kids made this one. What do you think? <laughs> His mouth's a little bit goofy. Alright, I want to give him a scarf. So let's see, what color should we give the scarf? Let's do a pretty red. And this is Matter Lake Red, I believe. I'm trying to see, I can't see it that far away. All I'm gonna do is just kind of do some little dots to make a scarf. Look like he has a fuzzy scarf. And usually you have a little piece hanging down, so you have to decide which side. Let's do this side. He's got a little spot there and another little piece hanging down there. There you go. And let's give him some arms. And for that, we'll need a brown. Maybe I will do a little bit of the sepia. It should be right here. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, my finger with the black. <laughs> this poor little card. I kind of messed it up. Okay, but we're just going to go in. Kind of go up like so. Okay. Give him one on the other side. Let's see. Just kind of draw an invisible line across. You can start right about here. There. <laughs> now he needs a nose. Golden deep. Golden deep. Okay. And we'll put him a nose. Can you see that? Oh, sorry, I'm making sure I'm on camera. There. <laughs> oh. get rid of most of it. That's one of the wonderful things about watercolor. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier to uh, correct your mistakes. So there you go. That just took a few minutes and it's cute. Even with the mouth, you know, a little bit kind of messed up, it's still cute. And you can always go in and add something um, extra, which we actually may do at the end. We'll see how we do for time. But that's our first one. 
Okay, for our second one, I thought we would do a wreath. I'm going to start out probably with a lighter green. I believe I was using, what is this, chromium oxide. Okay, so we will just kind of, I'll just use this to give the general outline of my wreath. There we go. So that'll generally be it. And I do that really just to give a green background because I'm going to be adding strokes, but in case I miss a spot or whatever, I know it's green. Plus it gives me, like I said earlier, a general parameter for my wraith. Now I'm going to go back and add darker green, and for that, I think I will use, this just says green, so <laughs> it's just green. go in with really dark so I don't put much water on my brush I go back in and just really touch the paint and it is just the straight color so it's not mixed with any other color green I'm sure that's probably a no-no but it's just the easiest thing to do and that gives you a good um, ability to go in and just have some detailed branches showing so it helps give detail like in this little area where it got kind of blended and blurred you can just go back in um, with some straight pigment and uh, just fill it in. just keep going round and round and until it gets a nice full look that you want. So there you go. That's super easy. It's quick and easy and it turns out really cute. Now you can get fancy and use a variety of different colors of greens um, and it will lighten up some when it dries. But if you're just looking for a nice quick little tag, <laughs> there you go. Okay, for our next one, we're going to keep it in the green family again, and we'll do a Christmas tree. It's going to be very similar to the way I did the wreath. I'm going to start with a lighter green. I'll use some more of the chromium oxide. And this is just to get a general idea of where I want my tree. Okay. Oops, got a little hair. So something um, about like so. And then I'm going to come in with the darker green and just do the same type of stroke.
here's our little tree and you can leave it like this or you can really make it into a Christmas tree and adorn it and Again, we'll take a look at the end and see if we're going to do any touch-ups on any of our tags that we make. Okay, for our next one, we're going to go back to the green and we're going to add some red because we're going to do a holly sprig. So I think I want to try and combine some of this olive green with what they just call green. <laughs> it's kind of general, isn't it? Let's mix it up just a little bit. You can use whatever green you'd like to. Now I think for this one, I think I'll have the leaves take up a good part of um, my area. So let's, let's get going and see what happens. And see especially the one I just did my paper is still damp and I don't want it to bleed I don't want the berries to bleed into it I'm gonna wait and let this dry just a minute I'll probably take my heat gun to it I use my heat gun and now it is dry so for my berries I think I'm going to use this Matter Lake red light let's see this one is that a little bit more yeah I want some nice bright berries Tell you what, let's add some of the ruby in there as well. Make our berries stand out. And here's what we have now if you look at what you've done and you think okay so this may not be the best it's kind of wonky <laughs> my leaves are a little bit wonky you have some choices you can go back over it with paint and try to to fix it you can say yay and embrace the wonky and just kind of let it roll or you can try to add some pencil um, or pen um, rather to assist with a whimsical look and that will distract from the wonkiness or actually emphasize the wonkiness in a whimsical way. Let me show you. I think I will try and use um, one of these pens from EK Tool. Oops, sorry, from EK Tools. It's just a black pen. Let's see, I want something kind of on the thin side. Let's try just like a 0.25. And all I want to do is just try to go around the outside, except not, you know, right on the edge, but just really in a loose kind of way. Something kind of like this. See how that really gives it a real whimsical look? And you can even do around your berries too.
stuck them there. And there you go. It's cute and it's fun and whimsical and it doesn't matter if everything is not perfect. It just doesn't matter. It's still fun and cute. So here we are. We have four different designs. They're all cute and neither, none of them take very long. So you can definitely leave them like this, but you can also add a little something to them if you want to. So I thought we would do that on a couple of these. So let's take the snowman. For our snowman, I thought it would be kind of neat just to have a little bit of glitter because he's made of snow and snow glistens. And so I thought that would be really cute. I'm just gonna take a little bit, put it on my brush. And let's see, especially See how we have shading, but there's parts that are white. We're actually, well, actually, they don't have any paint on them, but they're supposed to be white. I think that's where I'm going to put most of my glitter. So I'm going to aim for those open spots. Oops. I don't know. As you can see, I got into my red. This is watercolor. So, you know, it's not like acrylic paint when once it's dried, it's pretty much dried. It will um, smudge. So let me see if I can fix that real fast. And I'm just going to add water to it. And, and then just wipe it off on a paper towel. So I'll add a little bit of water. And then try to scoop it up with my brush. Just saturate it, kind of rub it. This is how you go about fixing a watercolor error, as long as it's not on top of another color of paint. Now that we have the glitter, this cream coat glitter ice, I'm not getting the result that I normally would get, but I think it did help it just a little bit. But anyway, something to keep in mind <laughs> if you want to embellish like this because watercolor is, you know, it dries, but as soon as it comes in contact with something wet, it's ready to roll. Literally, it'll move all over the place. Let's see if we can cover it up. <laughs> okay, I want to try to be careful, I guess, and not touch the black either which was a little bit tough on the face, but I'm going to give it a try. I hope I don't mess him up. Hmm. I feel like I want something with a better point on it than the, than the brush I had, because I think I was just asking for trouble. <laughs> so, I want to spread out what I put on just a little bit. I'm going to try to be careful. Come on be crazy. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know if that will show up. Glitter is always tough to get to show on camera. But it sparkles and it adds just a little something. It's very cute. So I think we're going to be done with our little snowman. All right. Next we have our wreath. For this, I thought it would be cute to add a bow. So I made this little bow out of this holiday ribbon. This is what I used. I thought I would, um, I would glue it. So I thought I would use some hot glue. I'm gonna try to put it on my bow first so if I get glue all over it, it won't mess up my picture. Put a little bit of hot glue. Come on, just a little bit. Okay. And put that down like this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Again, it's just a little touch, something super quick that you don't have to, you know, work very hard at and doesn't take very long. Now for a tree, what is a Christmas tree without a star and ornaments? So I thought I'd do a little bit more on this one, but it still won't take very long at all. I'm going to use some stickles and I'm going to use this, um, what is this, goldenrod for my star. 
All right, here's my plan. Stickles can be maybe not so easy to to draw with for something that's very tiny. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to put a glob of glue, and then I'm going to take something else and try to form it into a star. Okay. There's my glob. I'm just going to take this little Cricut pokey tool, that's what I call it, and I'm just going to try to fashion out some um, a shape of a star. There we go. Cute! Now I'm going to use some red stickles and add a few ornaments. Okay, let's see. We'll do red all there, right there, and right here. There you go. Cute, and it just took a second. Stickles are great because they're glittery and it really adds a lot of sparkle. Now on our last one, I don't think I'm going to do anything at all because we've already added the pencil which gives it that whimsical look, so it already has a little something extra and I think it's fine just the way it is. Here I want to show you uh, just some other options. So here are some that I did before I did the ones that we did together and they don't have any kind of glitter or any kind of adornment and they still look really cute. Now I also added a to and from stamp on the inside of these so this is an option as well or you could leave them blank like we did and then you can just write on it on the inside maybe put a personal note if you don't want to have a designated to and from spot. So you've got these now, if you don't have watercolors and you don't have heavy, fancy paper, it doesn't matter. You can do this with a pen and you can still make your own. Here, I, I have added a border like I discussed earlier and just used the same strokes except with a pen and um, I made a tree. What I used to make this is a blank index card. And that's where I got the size from, because this is what I first was kind of practicing and playing with. And it's three by five. And I just folded it over and just used a pen and drew that one. You could also do your snowman. Mm -hmm. You can also add a little bit of color and just use markers. I did this one. And I did this one. Um, just drawing it. This is a stamp. I did stamp Merry, Merry Christmas. So again, if you want to add a stamp, make sure you you know keep your picture to the size that you need to leave room to uh, to add your stamped message. Otherwise, you know you can just use markers, and it doesn't have to be fancy markers. To make these, I use these from Jot, which I got from the dollar store. They're just dollar store markers. So you don't need fancy tools or equipment. You just need a piece of paper and a pen, really. Something else you could do is go over your drawing uh, or your painting again with metallic watercolor. And that's what I did here. I just added some gold and silver to the wreath and went around it using the same brush stroke that I did to make the wreath. And the same here with the Christmas tree. And that adds a little something special to it as well. So that's it. We've got our four that we did. And I showed you some alternatives you can do. Just use what you have. See what supplies you can get. Or maybe you wouldn't mind buying something. Check the dollar store. That's where I got those markers. Find yourself some paper and make your own gift tags. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found this useful. And I hope it is something that you will give a try. If you do, make sure you tag me at The Artful Attic. I would love to see what you come up with. It's fun. It's easy to do. And you can do it. <laughs> you can. If I can, you can. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and uh, check my channel out. Check out the other videos I have and if you like what you see I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. I've got so many ideas. Can't get them filmed fast enough. Um, so I'm really excited about the stuff that's going to be coming up for Christmas. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. You all have a fantastic day and stay tuned for the pictures. 
拜。